From the Temple Mount, the paratroopers sprinted to the western wall to clear it of snipers. There were serious casualties, but in minutes the battle was over. For the first time in 2,000 years, the old city of Jerusalem was in Jewish hands. And for many, it was a moment that was almost impossible to fathom. Yitzhak Rabin rushed to be with his men, keeping his emotions in check. He told himself this is no time for weeping. This is a moment of redemption and hope. In the days after the war's end, hundreds of thousands of Israelis converged upon the old city, religious and secular Jews alike. People were really flowing. People wanted to see the Kotel. We grew up with uh, pictures of the, of the wall, you know, especially when I remember myself as a, a very young kid in uh, Budapest in Hungary. But when the Kotel was actually captured, people felt this picture on the wall becoming a reality. And people were kind of yearning to see, like you want to see a very dear, long-lost relative that you just heard about it, and finally it's time to embrace it. That Friday night, the first since the liberation of Jerusalem, there were special meanings to the Sabbath prayer. Jerusalem, God's city below, rise from your ruins and your despair. Too long have you dwelled in the valley of the weeping. God's pity shall crown your prayer. Come, my beloved, and greet your Sabbath bride. Mount Scopus, a concert celebrating the reunification of Jerusalem and the end of the war was held. Leonard Bernstein conducted the Israeli Philharmonic. Isaac Stern was the featured soloist. Uh, it was a special moment. It was a recognition of both their accomplishments and of our belonging with them. At a ceremony at Hebrew University on Mount Scopus, Yitzhak Rabin was awarded an honorary doctorate for his service to the country during the war. A doctor, Yitzhak Rabin, Loset Edwell. He reflected on the responsibilities of the victor. We find more and more a strange phenomena among our fighters. Their joy is incomplete, and more than a small portion of sorrow prevails in their festivities. The warriors in the front lines saw with their own eyes not only the glory of victory, but also the price, their comrades that fell beside them. And the terrible price which our enemy paid touched the heart of many of our men. It may be that the Jewish people has never learned or accustomed itself to feel the triumph of conquest and victory, and therefore we receive it with mixed feelings. final radio address to the country at the war's end, Chaim Herzog spoke for millions of Israelis. From my window, I look out upon the Temple Mount, and once again the armies of Israel guard the city wall, adorned by the flag of Israel. A burnt-out tank lies on its side before a gate in the wall, silent testimony to the price which our people paid. May we be worthy of this price. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> please welcome Dalia Rabin, the daughter of Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, 
who will accept the medal on behalf of the Rabin family. Dalia, on behalf of millions of people who have walked on the ancient cobblestones on their way to the Western Wall, it is my honor to present the Simon Wiesenthal Center Medal of Valor to your late father, Yitzhak Rabin, liberator of Jerusalem, soldier, Nobel Peace Prize laureate, and prime minister of the State of Israel. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, distinguished guests. I came here this evening to honor all of you for the tribute that you are paying to my father, who was born in Jerusalem and fought in 1948 in the most difficult and bloodiest of her battles. He closed the circle in 1967 40 years ago, when he had the privilege of serving as the chief of staff of the Israeli Defense Forces and experienced what was always for him indescribable, rushing to the Kotel Amaravi. As he stood at the Wailing Wall, the blood of the fallen and the wounded mixed with tears of pain and joy. Jerusalem of gold of copper and of light. Jerusalem was united and became whole. I was in high school during the 1967 war. I remember saying goodnight to my father on a Sunday morning, Sunday night, and waking up without him on Monday morning. I went to school like everyone else in the neighborhood and learned about the war only when an air raid siren interrupted our school day and students were rushed into shelters. On Wednesday, the 7th of June, I came home from school and like on all other days, went to my room to do my homework. I had a small transistor radio that I always listened to. And on that Wednesday evening, while doing math problems, it happened. I can still hear the voice of the military correspondent on the radio. He was with the troops and he described entering the old city, traversing the alleyways and arriving at the Kotel. I called my mother who was in the kitchen. Mom, they are in the old city of Jerusalem. I heard Rabbi Goran blow the shofar. I heard the crying and the exaltation. I heard the history that my father was living on a small transistor radio in my 17 years old bedroom in Tzahala. My father lived so much of the history of the State of Israel. He is most remembered for his military and political achievements, but he didn't, want, didn't dream of being a prime minister or a commander in chief. My father wanted to be a water engineer, a profession that he thought was essential for the growth in the parched Middle East. What drove my father to dedicate his life to public service was very simple, the quest to create a thriving Jewish state. And to create a thriving state, my father believed that every person must be equipped with the tools necessary to excel. He promoted this belief through social and educational initiatives, pouring resources into Israel's peripheral communities and expending great efforts to close social and economic gaps. I know that the best way to honor my father 
is to continue his life's work to ensure that his vision continues to impact Israel's youth. The Yitzhak Rabin Center today is dedicated to educational programming and outreach with the goal of facilitating genuine social change by advancing democratic values, equalizing educational opportunity, and promoting understanding and respect among Israel's diverse population, we hope to create a better Israeli society. We also must teach the lessons of the assassination and ensure that the next generation of leadership is prepared to confront the challenges facing Israel and the region. The story of my father, of the Jewish state, and the homeland of the Jewish people, and your story, the Simon Wiesenthal Center, are so closely linked. Our mission is intertwined and our work supports each other. You lead the struggle to promote tolerance and oppose racism of all types, everywhere. Your battle knows no boundaries. It is colorblind. It prefers no religion and favors no ethnicity. And as you look forward to tomorrow, you stand firmly rooted in the past. The fight for the commemoration and remembrance of the Jewish legacy is what paves the way to a better future. Your mission is the essence of our being as a nation and as a people. If we forget, we will be lost. Im lo na'ale al rosh simchateinu, where will we be? Tonight, it is again my honor to accept the Medal of Valor Award on behalf of my father. He would have been proud to be beside men and women of great courage, like Anne Carey and Professor Liviu Librescu. May his memory be a blessing. My dear friends, we stand again today in Israel, as we often do, facing a complex and cruel reality. The challenges that rise before us are many, as are the problems that we must continue to address. In these difficult days, we look around for someone to lean on, and here we find you standing on the front lines. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.